Good day, Grade 12s. Welcome to this next lesson on Momentum and Impulse. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at conservation of momentum. But what is conservation of momentum? Let's look at the definition. The definition states, the principle of conservation of linear momentum states that the linear momentum of a closed or isolated system remains constant or is conserved. Now, what we're doing here is we are allowing for different phraseology, but you need to understand that you do not need, if you write the word closed, you don't need to write the word isolated. And if you say it remains constant, then you don't need to write is conserved and vice versa. But the most important thing is that you need to understand that this, the linear momentum, in a system that has no external forces acting on it, remains constant, okay? And that is very, very important. But what does this mean to us? This means that in an isolated system, the total momentum before a collision or an explosion equals the total momentum after a collision or explosion. And we are going to be using this to solve different problems in the next couple of slides. Hi, everybody. I'll need a very smooth surface to prevent friction and these two shiny balls, which also offer very little resistance. Watch what happens as the two balls move towards each other. Both balls have a mass of 150 grams. Ball one is traveling at a speed of two meters per second, and ball two is traveling at a speed of 1,5 meters per second. They collide head on. After the collision, ball one travels at 1,5 meters per second to the left. With this information, you should be able to calculate the velocity of ball two after the collision. So following on from the last slide's example, we have got one billiard ball that is traveling to the right at two meters per second and one billiard ball that's to the left at 1.5 meters per second. They bump together and then we know that this white ball is going away at 1.5 and we want to know what is the black ball going away. And in this case, both the mass of the balls are 150 grams. Now we are going to use the fact that momentum before, what would we say? Momentum before, momentum before, before the collision equals momentum after the collision. Okay, that's what we said. That was the conservation of momentum. And do you remember that momentum has a simple P and P is equal to MV, where this is the mass of the object and that is the velocity of the object. So remember, momentum is a vector and it has direction. And you'll notice since the white ball is traveling to the right and the left ball is traveling to the left, we need to designate a direction is either being positive or negative. And then we're going to use this to find out what the velocity of this eight ball is. And it might be obvious to you right now because it's a pretty easy question, but we're still going to go through the motion so you can see how easy it is to do this question. So we let's designate to the right as positive. Okay, so in other words, this is going to be a plus two, and that is going to be a minus 1.5. So what do we have initially? We have got the momentum of the white ball plus the momentum of the black ball is equal to the momentum of the white ball plus the momentum of the black ball. Right. And what is momentum? Momentum is mass times velocity. So we're going to have mass of the white ball, initial velocity of the white ball, plus mass of the black ball, initial velocity of the black ball, is equal to mass of the white ball, final velocity of the white ball, plus mass of the black ball, final velocity of the black ball and grade 12s. This line here is super important. Not only does it designate marks for it, but if, for example, you write momentum before equals momentum answer and then do random calculations and come up with an answer, you may have been doing everything correctly, but because you didn't show them how you were doing it, you would get no 
method marks. So if, for example, you made a silly mistake and wrote 2.5 instead of 1.5, your whole calculation would be out and you would get zero for a fairly big question, which is usually six to eight marks. Whereas if you show your working, including this line, which shows what your substitution is going to be, where your substitution is, you will get all your marks or you'll get seven out of eight or six out of eight, even though you made a mistake right at the top you have been possibly putting the velocity here as 2.5 instead of 1.5. So please, this line here is very important. You must do it with the subscripts. Okay. Now, first things first, the mass of the balls are 150 grams, and we know that mass has to be in kilograms. So to get from grams to kilograms, we need to divide by 1,000. So that's 0 0,15 kilograms. Okay. So we have got mass of the white ball, which is going to be 0, 0,15, velocity of the white ball, which is 2, plus mass of the black ball, which is 0, 0,15, velocity of the black ball. Now remember, it's in the opposite direction. It's traveling to the left. Therefore, it's going to be minus 1,5 is equal to mass of the white ball, again, which is 0, 0,15, it's the same. Velocity of the white ball, but in this case, it's traveling back this way. Okay, so therefore this time, it is going at minus 1.5, plus mass of the black ball, which is still 0, 0,15, and then the final velocity of V, FB. We do not know what their velocity is. And even though we can assume that we know the direction, you do not put the symbol in there. You leave us to find out what that is. Okay, now I'm going to show you a little trick because normally what you would do is you would just multiply everything and add and subtract and we get the final answer. But what a lot of people don't realize is if the two objects have the same mass and the masses are constant, okay, and they're available in every single one. We don't have to multiply, we can just cancel. So I'm effectively dividing all these terms by 0, 0,15, which makes my life a lot easier. So what do I have then? I've just got 2 minus 1,5 is equal to minus 1,5 plus VFB, okay? Therefore, we can say that VFB is obviously going to be what? It is obviously going to be, well, let's do it slower. We've got 2 minus 1.5 is going to be 0, 0,5. And then we've got plus the 1, 5. So the answer is going to be 2 meters per second. And because this answer is positive, we therefore know it is going to the right. And because velocity is a vector, we always tell it what direction it's going in, and therefore we say the velocity of the black ball or the eight ball is going two meters per second to the right. Okay, so that's pretty easy, right? We'll do some more examples so that you can get the hang of this. Now in the last slide, we did an example of a collision. In this case, we're going to be doing an example of an explosion, and it's exactly the same principle. Again, what we're looking at is that P before equals P after. P before equals P after. Okay, so let's talk about this. Do you agree initially what is happening? The two tracks are stuck together. Okay, they are stuck together. And because they are stuck together, we can add their masses together. So the total mass is going to be m plus 2m, which is a whopping 3m. And yeah, they are going off, and they're going off in opposite directions. Okay, they're going off in opposite directions. And you can see that, therefore, we need to give direction. Okay, a, in other words, we have to give left or right a positive or negative direction. So let's again choose u positive to the right as being positive. Okay, so u to the right is positive, which means this is going to be negative. For an explosion, the initial velocity is going to be zero. Why? Because it's stationary. These two trucks are standing against each other, and yeah, they're propelled away from each other by a spring. Okay, so what's happened? We've got, and this is combined, so we've got mass, okay, of, of the two trucks, two trucks, initial velocity of the two trucks. Why? Because they're stuck together. 
equals mass of, I'm going to call this track one, and I'm going to call that track two, of track one in the final velocity of track one plus mass of track two, final velocity of track two. Okay, so do you see that when the objects are stuck together, they are put in one object. We don't add them up separately. Why? Because even though they're two entities, they are stuck together, so they act as one body. Right. So the mass of these two is 3m. So that's 3m. But what is the initial velocity? We said they're stuck together and they're not moving anywhere. So the initial velocity is 0 is equal to the mass of track 1. And the mass of track 1 is just m times the final velocity is 2u, but it's 2u in the direction that is going to the left, so it's a negative 2u, okay, plus, yeah, we have the other track, and it has got a mass of 2m, 2m, and its velocity is just u, just u, okay, so do you go, you've got 0 is equal to minus 2mu plus 2mu. And what is minus 2mu plus 2mu? It is obviously 0. So in this case, you can see that because our initial momentum is 0, what does our final momentum have to be? Our final momentum of the whole system has to be 0 as well. Okay? Why? Because momentum is conserved in an isolated system. And what do we mean by isolated system? There are no external forces acting on it. There are no friction between the wheels. We're assuming that there's no friction between the wheels, etc., etc. Okay? So therefore, we can say, since we knew that P before was 0, we know that P after is 0. So then we can find out other things about this, which we'll do in another example later. Right, so let's look at another example. A track of mass 4,500 kilograms is traveling at 15 meters per second, hits a car from behind. Okay, so we've got a track of mass 4,500 kilograms traveling at 15 meters per second. So we've got a track. Okay, guys, you know my drawings always suck. But the point is that we have a track. Okay, and it has a mass of 4,500 kilograms and it's traveling at 15 meters per second and it hits a car okay and the car has a mass of a thousand kilograms and it's traveling this way at 10 meters per second and then what happens the two vehicles stick together so now you've got a track okay the trucks just got shorter okay let's make it bigger a bit longer Okay, you can see you do not need to do art to do well in science. And then you've got a car that's stuck together. Okay, and they're stuck together. And then now are traveling at some unknown velocity. And they're asking us to find out what is that unknown velocity, right? So what we're going to do is we can realize that this is momentum because what has happened here is this is a collision. And we're assuming that there's no external forces acting on it because they don't mention it. So therefore, it's an isolated system. So therefore, we can say P before equals P after. Okay. But what is the P before? The P before is made up of the mass of the track, the initial velocity of the track plus the mass of the car, the initial velocity of the car, which equals the mass of the track and car together times by the velocity, final velocity of the track and car. And this is what we're trying to find out. Okay, so let's fill in the bits and then work it out. Okay, so what is the mass of the track? The mass of the track is 4,500. The velocity of the track is 15. Now remember that velocity is a vector, and we have to think about the fact of directions and positives and negatives, but if we see the track is traveling to the right, in this case, at 15, the car is also traveling to the right at 10. So I'm going to say right, then obviously, this is going to be my positive, okay? To the right is my positive, 
and we're going to assume, oh no, they do, it says it's stick, the two vehicles stick together and travel in the same direction. So we know that the final velocity is also going to be positive. Okay, if we get a negative velocity, you've done something wrong. Okay, so plus, okay, the mass of the car, which is a thousand kilograms, and its velocity of 10 equals now the mass of the car and track together now they are stuck together so therefore and we assume that nothing falls off when they, they collided okay so they're stuck together and their mass is the same so therefore that's the sum of these two masses which is 4500 plus your thousand so the mass is now 5000 times the final velocity of the track and car and now all we have to do is a little bit of maths so we're going to take 4,500 times by 15 and we get 67,500 plus 10,000 equals 5,000 the final velocity of the truck and car all right so then we add the 10,000 and we get 77,500 is equal to 5,000 velocity final the track and car and yes you could have done this all in one fell swoop and got the velocity but it's nice to do it in steps and make sure you get it right so therefore the final velocity of the track and car is going to equal your 77,500 divided by 5,000 so that's 77,500 divided by 5,000 which is going to give you the final velocity of the track and car is 15,5 meters per second and it's in the same direction so we don't actually have to say that but let's just cover our bases so we could say forwards or you could say in the original direction so that is not a problem okay so you can see now how we've used the principle of conservation of momentum to solve three different problems and to prove or to find different things like velocities and masses and that okay right let's do a final example we have a cannon which has a mass of 96 kilograms it fires a cannonball which is a mass of four kilograms horizontally to the right at 120 meters per second what is the magnitude and direction of the initial recoil velocity of the cannon okay so now what do we have to think about we have to think about is that the cannon and the cannonball were actually one this is actually an explosion this cannonball was inside the cannon before it was shot out okay so what that means is that what do we know about the initial momentum the initial momentum p initial is made up of the p of the cannonball cannon and the cannonball do you agree okay and the p final is made up of the cannon the momentum of the cannon plus the momentum of the cannon ball okay everybody understand that because this initially this ball here is on the inside and then there's a little bit of gunfire and then they light up this fuse and it gets shot off and there you go it explodes so initially we've got the cannon ball lying in the cannon so we know that p before equals p after so we've got the P initial, which is the momentum of the cannonball and the cannon, which is just the cannonball sitting in the cannon. It's not doing anything. There's no velocity. So the initial momentum is zero, and that's important to realize. The momentum after is made up of the momentum of the cannon, which is the mass of the cannon, the final velocity of the cannon, plus the momentum of the cannonball, I mean the mass of the cannonball, the final velocity of the cannonball. Now, let's think about this. If you guys have all seen something being shot off or whatever, like a gun or a rifle or um, even a bow and arrow, I don't know if you can see it that much in bow and arrow, okay, or in this case, a cannonball and a cannon. When this gets shot off, the ball 
travels in the right direction, in this case in the forward direction, and there is a recoil, okay, and the recoil is when this cannon travels back in the opposite direction, it travels back in the opposite direction, and that is going to be what the recoil is, and they ask us to calculate the recoil velocity, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because of the fact that if this cannonball is going forwards, we are going to choose the forward velocity in this case as positive, then do you agree that we should be getting a negative velocity for our cannon because of the fact that it's a recoil velocity? Okay, so you need to think these things through. So we've got zero equals the mass of the cannon, which we are told is 96 kgs, times VFC, which is what we're trying to find out, plus the mass of the cannonball, which is 4, times its velocity of 120. Okay, so now we need to work this out. So we're going to take the 4 times 120, which is 480, and take it to the other side. So we're going to go minus 480 is equal to 96 times by the final velocity of the cannon. And then we're going to divide it by 96. And we're going to end up with 5. So we're going to go minus 5 is equal to the final velocity of the cannon. And we're happy that's minus because it means that the cannon is recoiling. It's going in the opposite direction. So the final velocity of the cannon is going to be 5 meters per second. Okay. And if this has been shot to the right, then this is to the left. And if they hadn't given you a direction, you could have said backwards or you could have said in the opposite direction. Right. So there you go. That's a quite a few examples. That's three exam four examples of how you can use momentum to solve problems or conservation momentum to solve problems. Please go practice and make sure you can do them in the turn system. Have a great day.